when we're discussing the Casual Killing Act, um, a lot of times we think of young brothers like Tamir Rice. You have Trayvon Martin. Mm -hmm. You have Michael Brown. Yeah. You have, um, I forgot the other brother's name, that was at the Walmart, I believe, and he was shopping for, a, I think, a BB gun? It was yeah, a toy yeah, rifle. Yeah. Oh, toy yeah. gun. And, and the police came in yeah. and shot him. Right. Why? Because Karen decided to call the cops on the brother. Right. Okay? Uh, all of those things that we discussed were either caught on camera, like mm -hmm. Tamir Rice, mm -hmm. um, the incident with Sandra Bland, right. prior to her going into the jail cell, right. and allegedly, we know it's BS, but allegedly hanging her own right. self. Mm -hmm. Um... You have Trayvon Martin, the mm -hmm. phone call with uh, George Zimmerman. Hey! But a lot of times you have deaths that are not caught on film. Right. Or the films get erased. Yes. Right. Mysteriously. Right. Mm -hmm. You have footage that gets deleted. Right. So uh, one death that really struck home with me was uh, our brother Kendrick Johnson. Our, our brothers and sisters online, you can Google this information. Uh, Kendrick Johnson was a brother, I believe in, in 2017, was yeah. a young man that was murdered. 2013. 2013? Mm -hmm. Oh, damn, that was that long ago. It was that yeah. long. And I'm yeah. still, I'm a while. I still think about that thing till this day. Yeah, because right. it's, it's exactly. fresh. I mean, it, it seems like. You that's know, so um, his, uh, his uh, murderers were never brought to justice. Uh, they're saying that he supposedly um, reached into a gym mat to retrieve a pair of sneakers, right. and then he died of asphyxiation. And the whole world knows this bull BS. Right. The whole world knows that's a case of bull. God knows that's BS. That's right. And there will be justice. That's if not justice right. on earth, there will be justice once Christ comes back. That's justice. right. And that's, that's going to be the most brutal justice of that's them all. Right. That's okay. Right. Hello, Shalom. Thank you for calling in the scripts. Uh, who's speaking? Hello, this is Johnson. Uh, hello, Mrs. Johnson. How are you doing? Thank you for calling in. Thank you for calling in. Um, we appreciate you calling in. Uh, to all the viewers watching online, this is uh, Kendrick Johnson's mother that's on the line. Um, we appreciate you calling in, Mrs. Johnson. Thank you all for having me. Yes, ma'am. So um, I wanted to, um, of course, the reason we're doing this, we wanted to bring awareness to this uh, unfortunate situation. And we do thank you again for calling in. Um, I wanted you to expound on on what happened to your son, if possible. If you could expound on that to those people who are tuning in who, who are not too familiar with the case. Yes, my son was um, killed at Lowndes High School in Valdosta, Georgia, on January 10th, 2013. He was found dead, wrapped up in a wrestling mat. Um, the people told us they tried to... He was trying to retrieve his tennis shoe. Wow. Wow. For, for, the, for the brothers and sisters that's been following the case, uh, we could all agree that that, that excuse, that, that's a, a bold-faced lie. Um, there's no way you're dying of asphyxiation trying to retrieve a tennis shoe. And nobody, I don't think anybody would try to retrieve a tennis shoe from a vertical gym mat, you know? So that's, that's a bold-faced lie. Um, when did you realize that there was some foul play involved? Yes, he, my son was beat to death. Yes. By, uh, some boys in that, in that gym. Mm -hmm. And they rolled him up inside the wrestling mat and turned the mat upside down. Yes, ma'am. My son was a 17-year-old, and he played football, he um, ran track, and he also played basketball. Me knowing my son, if the, those mats were standing up and his tennis shoes would have been in there, he'd have slung all those mats down, and got his tennis shoes, and went on to class. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, Mrs. Johnson, um, when did you realize that there was foul play involved, that somebody caused harm to your son? Because initially when, when um, 3 p.m. came and you didn't see your son come home from school, were you alarmed in any way? At what time period did you realize, okay, something is wrong? Um, by 8 o'clock, because sometimes he would stay after school for like maybe a, a basketball game or either a, a football game, whatever is going on at the school. So 
when, but he hadn't asked me. So, you know, his dad drove truck. So I was like, maybe he told his dad he was going to stay after school. So I went to calling them and him and my kids and nobody had heard from KJ. And, you know, right then we knew something was wrong, but we didn't know what was wrong. Yes. Okay. And then you, uh, you received the call the next day from the school that your, your son was found in the gym mat? No, they didn't, they didn't call us the next day. We we made a report that night, and, you know, I stayed up all night long. And the next morning when school time came, I got up, and I was out to the schoolhouse by 7, 30, 8 o'clock. And I was waiting, you know, to see if Kendrick going to come to school. But I, I, I in my heart, I already knew something was seriously wrong. So I went out to the schoolhouse. And they never told me. I just overheard them talking on the telephone where I was sitting down at. Because when I first got there, the chef, the, the man that sit at the school resource officer told me, well, he didn't come to class, so you can go on back home. We'll call you if he turn up. Wow. No, I, I wasn't going nowhere. I stayed to that school. Wow. Unbelievable. Now, the people that said that they were going to call you, I'm pretty sure you spoke to the principal and so forth of the school. Um. Is there any? No, I never, you never didn't? spoke to the principal. Okay, but I spoke to the resource officer. Resource officer. Now, uh, do mm -hmm. you think that, do you think there's a possibility that the resource officer knew what happened to Kendrick? I I feel like he does because okay. he's one that sit up there and watch those cameras. So yeah, I feel like he know exactly what happened to Kendrick. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, so um, according to the sources, uh, Mrs. Johnson, um, the initial autopsy stated that he died of asphyxiation, of course, right? Which was which was false. That was all a lie. Um, are you familiar with the name Marianne Gaffney Craft? Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. She she was the uh, um the uh, medical examiner for the GBI, right? Yes. All right. Now, is that the same GBI that a uh, Rick Bell worked for? That's the um, that's the um, autopsy place, crime lab. Okay. Wow. So, so they what made so so they made a big error because uh, they said that it was asphyxiation, but when you decided to do your own autopsy after you re-exhumed the body, it came back that there was foul play. Yes, blunt force trauma. They didn't make no error. They know exactly what they was doing. They yeah. were trying because the first autopsy, when they said position of asphyxiation, the EMTs on the scene that day said something had happened to Kendrick because he had bruising in his right jaw. So when we had our second autopsy done, the the pathologist found bruising on his right jaw, and that's where he said the blunt force trauma happened at in his neck mm -hmm. on that right side. Yes. Wow. And then uh, when you did your the autopsy, um, you found that all of his organs were missing as well, right? Yes. Every organ in his body from his brain, his tongue, his windpipe, his throat, his heart, his lung, his kidneys, every internal organ to his pelvic was missing. Wow. Now, don't you have to... In order for them to do away with your organs, don't you have to give permission to the medical examiner for that to happen? Yes. And no permission was given? None. His clothes went missing. All his organs went missing. They stuffed his body with newspaper. Wow. Wow. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So they stuffed his body with newspaper. Unbelievable. So, I mean, the only time I've heard of that, brothers, Officer Shema, Officer Yakub, is when you're trying to hide somebody's death. Exactly. The time of death or the way that or the way they died. That's the only time you hear of things like that. Wow. Mm -hmm. You're trying to hide something. So th that leads me to and believe that there was some foul play that they were trying to cover up. Oh yeah. Because the shoe that was under his head, what they placed uh, they placed the shoe under his head. It had no blood on the shoe, none. And Kendrick, had th he had vomited, and blood was pooling from his mouth. So 
blood should have been all over that shoe. Vomit should have been all over that shoe. That shoe did not have no vomit, no blood, nothing on it. But yet they placed it in the bottom of the mat under his head. Wow. Yeah, and that's just to tamper with the evidence scene. You know, like when you watch these crime, I don't know if you've ever seen a lot of these uh, crime movies, uh, Mrs. Johnson, but let's say there's a homicide. Somebody will maybe kill the suspect away from other bodies. They'll scatter things around to bring more confusion into the investigation. Mm. And unfortunately, Mrs. Johnson, this is what, what it seems like with this uh, particular situation, that there was a lot of tampering oh, yeah. of evidence to cause confusion. You know? Oh, yeah. Uh, Wow. So um, I was doing um, my own reading on this investigation, Mrs. Johnson, and the name Ryan Hall came up. Are you familiar with that name? I am. Okay. And what? who was that? Was that a close friend of Kendrick or with the Bell Brothers? He was a close friend with the Bell Brothers. Okay. All right. And what did he say? Do you remember his any of his statements or? I don't. I never got one of his statements. Okay. All right. So the the students um at at a Valdosta High School. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. So there was no witnesses. Yeah, there were no witnesses. Nobody was in the gym. Nobody seen nothing. I find that hard to believe. It was. <laughs> That's what they said. It was no witnesses. But they said um, when Kendrick came in, he went to the left. And when the little white boy came in, he went to the right. But if Kendrick came in and went to the left, he went straight into a brick wall. And so did the little white guy. If he came in, he walked straight into a brick wall because there's nothing over there but bleachers and brick walls. So another lie they told. Yes. And then when we got the, the film... All you seen was kids playing basketball the whole while in the gym. But yet, Stry Jones said when there was nobody but two people went in the gym, and it was Kendrick Johnson went to the left, and the little white boy went to the right. But then when we got the the tape, the video, you seen kids playing basketball, kids running around in the gym. Yes. It's just terrible. Absolutely. It is very terrible. And um, the whole world knows that the video was tampered with. You know, the whole world sees it. And more importantly, God sees it. Um, now, um, Mrs. Johnson, has the district um, attorney closed the case thus far? Yes. OK, so the case is closed and there's no chance that they can reopen it. They can reopen it, but they choose not to. Mm -hmm. So what's gonna what what can um what can the public do to the to the people that are watching right now who are hearing this for the first time or to the people that have been keeping up with this um unfortunate um story what can they do on their end to see if the district attorney could reopen it does a petition have to be signed or do do they have to write the senators? It's a petition online. Petition. Um, justice for Kendrick, but. Um, call into the um, Lowndes County, call into the um, district attorney, call the Supreme Court, I mean, call the FBI, call the GBI. Um, we, we're we going to force them to move their hand. They gonna, they're they're not going to have a choice but to reopen Kendrick's case. Absolutely. Absolutely. They are all trying to dismiss every lawsuit. And, you know, we've been on the COVID-19, but yet they're not trying to give our attorney any Mm -hmm. Leeway, they're just trying to dismiss everything, and so it'll make it look like you know nothing has been done on Kendrick's behalf. Yes, yes, and um, and they also said that you had to um pay back the Bell family, right, with two hundred thousand or something like that. I don't know if that could it's be the Bell family and some of the um other other people um attorney fees, and it's almost three hundred thousand dollars. Wow, so unbelievable. to me, it feels like we got to pay the murder, the people that allegedly murdered my son, we got to pay them for murdering my son. Yes. That's how I feel. Yes. And this is why this case hit home with me since um, since it started in 2013. I've been keeping track. And it, it, it sort of, uh, Ms. Johnson, if you can uh, favor my comparison a bit, it sort of reminds me of uh, the Haitian Revolution in Haiti when the, the slaves in Haiti 
overthrew the French for the, um, the cruelty of slavery. And then France said, okay, since you overthrew us for enslaving you, now you got to pay us back $2 billion. It's almost the same thing. You've been through so much by, you know, you lost your son, and then now you got to pay back these people. It's unbelievable, unbelievable. But, you know, the, the, yeah. that's why the Bible says, uh, Mrs. Johnson, never trust your enemies. Never trust your enemies. I want to I read yeah. something for you, Mrs. Johnson. Get me that in the book of Luke, because this is what Christ said. There might be a possibility, Mrs. Johnson, that justice won't be served in this lifetime on right now. But I could assure you, I could assure you when Jesus Christ comes back, there will be justice. There will be justice. Mm -hmm. OK, and uh, we're going to make, you know, we're going to bring awareness to the situation and so forth, you know. Um, but definitely what you got to do is uh, fast and pray, fast and pray mm -hmm. for the destruction of your enemies, Ms. Johnson. OK, mm -hmm. you need to fast and pray for the destruction of your enemies and there will be justice. There will be justice. So you said the, um, the petition and also contact the district attorney, right? Yes. Okay, for those brothers and sisters watching, hopefully there's some lawyers watching or so forth. Okay, let, let's bring out yes. a scripture. Get me uh, the book of Psalms. Go ahead. Yeah. The book of Psalms, chapter 143 and verse 12. Freedom! And of thy mercy, cut off mine enemies and destroy all them that afflict my soul, for I am thy servant. Yes, so that's the prayers that that's the prayer that we have to have on our lips, Miss Johnson. And we're gonna make sure that we keep your family in prayer and all the other black mothers and fathers who have not gotten justice in this system for the loss of their loved ones. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.